So, sorry about that. Part two. Part two. To part 11 of um, the smartest man in the world. And uh, we just want to finish up the question that was asked. And for those new who are joining us, thank you and welcome to the smartest man in the world show. And um, I welcome all you earthlings, you little people. And as Dr. Zachary Smith would say, never fear, Dr. Smith is here. All of you mental midgets. <laughs> I um, was asked an interesting question and I'm finishing up. Uh, how, you know, being that you have these resources, this extra brain power on this program, how would you... Stone thug. How would you solve the unemployment problem for African Americans in America? With unemployment being in the neighborhood of 15%, in reality it's more like 25% in certain parts of the country, inner cities and whatnot. How would you solve the problem? How can it be solved? And I was answering the question at the first half of this video. And I'll reiterate what I said, and I'll finish it up. But what I was saying is basically, it's an easy question to ask, and it's an easy question to answer. If you take the government out of it. Because if you look at, okay, we have a president, the most powerful man on earth. Uh, can he fix it? And the answer is sure. He could fix it. He could start full blast with green home development. Take that $4 billion welfare uh, food stamp program they have for the oil company, in which they give them $4 billion a year. To help subsidize what they do, which is ridiculous, and give that to new renewable energy uh, developments. That's right, Solentra and all those type of companies. And though Solentra was a monumental, monumental, it was a failure, catastrophic failure. Um, it was one out of maybe. Uh, 250 of those types of companies that they supported that uh, failed when the others are doing quite well. And not to compare ourselves to what they're doing in Asia because their government uh, is I'm so tongue tied today. It's subsidizing uh, the development of their renewable energy programs. And if we got 100% behind ours, now I understand all the reasoning behind it, lobbyists and the oil industry and um, those guys are quite powerful, their lobbies are, uh, lobbyists are quite um, effective in keeping renewables down. But renewables, wind energy, green energy, that's the future, that's, that's, you can't stop it, it's, it's unstoppable. And it's going on quite well over in Europe right now and we're lagging behind the rest of the world in renewables. I mean because uh, oil with all its benefits it has um, some downfalls. You know it's affecting the weather, it's affecting the water, uh, it's uh, affecting so many things. Now and if the government was fair about it and reasonable and if these uh, big oil companies were more thoughtful on sharing the wealth that they suck out the ground of these different nations and even ours, and they were more considerate, uh, then they could probably go another, oh, I, I can imagine another 50 years strong. But when you have um, small-minded individuals running things, pushing buttons and 
trying to hoard all the natural resources uh, from the various countries, and particularly this one, and not share it with the people and divide it, you know. Uh, when they only see the few and don't see the many, well, people naturally are going to look for alternative um, ways to uh, to get what they want at a better price, at a better cost. You know, it's just the way the world works. So, big business. The oil business could do it. They could snap their finger. And we want to hire every little boy and girl who's white out in Georgia, Atlanta, Mississippi, all the South. We want to hire every black kid from every major metropolitan city in America, Detroit, Boston, Chicago, Atlanta, unemployment would be wiped out, wiped out, in 60 days. They could do it. So big business can do it if it wanted to, if it chose to. The president with executive powers in the most powerful, influential human on the planet Earth, he could do it. He could legislate it or he could just uh, executive order, you know, create more green jobs and things of that nature. They could do it. Private industry, big town, rich, powerful people, they could all get together and... Um, form some sort of uh, new inner city development to take on um, new industries, new cottage industries that they, that they want to develop and nurture. Just uh, starting parks and, 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 and uh, for different forms of renewables within the cities and have people do it. They could do it if they so desire. But I think there is a way, since you asked me, that it can be done without any of those entities. Without any of those. The government, the president, uh, which is part of the government, the, the millionaires club, the billionaires club, uh, which are just good prosperous Americans who might want to get back. Corporate America, which have lots of reasons why it's a good thing to do. They would have more customers. They would be giving back to America in a big way. They would um, be supporting peace and harmony, harmony in inner cities and rural areas. Uh, they could do it because they claim we're a godly nation, and it's a godly thing to do. They could do it because it's the right and fair and reasonable thing to do, considering we are from the same country. We're number one. We're number one. And it would be a reasonable thing for all of them to get together and wipe it out and do it this year. Be simple. Opposition would arise, but um, the overall good, the benefit to humanity and to the country would overshadow any opposition in a very short span of time. So it can be done through legislation and through uh, private industry. But if they don't, for whatever reason, Black folks can do it. And I touched on it a little bit before the tape ended on part one, but now I'm going to finish it and it's part two. And I'm not going to even call this part two. I'm going to say that that was tape number 11. I'll just call this 12 because it's confusing with the half parts. So this is 12, part 12. 
the way it can be done, the way I would do it, I think it would be fair and reasonable for the government and private industry to do it, and they can do it quickly. But if they don't, if they choose not to, I think black folks today can do it. Now, maybe they couldn't do it, you know, a hundred years ago, of course, uh, because uh, money was far and few and all that kind of stuff, influence. But with um, the power that they possess now as a, a group of 30 million strong, I think it would be quite easy to solve the 30%, 25% unemployment in the inner cities. If black folks were to, as I mentioned before, sacrifice $1,000 every five years, not every year, not every month, once every five years, $1,000. And I said before, and I'll say it again, it, it may not be a sacrifice, but you have to look at it and give it as a private citizen, as a regular person, which is the price of uh, a Happy Meal per day or a cup of coffee per day from Starbucks, which would accumulate, which would, you know, be the sum of a thousand dollars. And um, if you just think about it, it would, you know, it, we're talking probably three bucks a day, less than five dollars a day. And you, you take that money. Uh, this this three dollars a day that you would you know normally I don't know get you a Twinkie what or some sort of something you just put it in a can because I'm talking about non-rich black folks I'm, I'm not talking about Jay Z and Beyonce and and uh, and all those those Oprah you know forget all of those rich folks just regular regular everyday people take three dollars three dollars. And you stick it in a can, a jar, under your bed. And at the end of the year, you got this thousand dollars. Now you don't take a vacation with it. You got your other money for a vacation. And you don't buy you a new dress or a Gucci bag or a Louis Vuitton or none of those other fancy things that you can get and you're welcome to them. You work hard enough for them, you deserve it, you should get that too. But you take this thousand dollars and you get together with a hundred other black folks and they all have a hundred dollars a hundred people with a thousand dollars each uh, not a hundred dollars a thousand dollars you get together with a hundred people with a thousand dollars each that's a hundred thousand dollars and with that hundred thousand dollars you simply go within a couple of blocks from where you live a block or half a block from where you live or on the corner where you live or within three or five blocks away you live and you see a business that's there that is uh, something that has been making money maybe it's a hair salon maybe it's a nail salon maybe it's um, a hamburger joint maybe it's a pizza place maybe it's whatever and you hundred people which is a small group of people you can get a hundred people in your house or your backyard and you guys simply buy that business. Buy it for $25,000. Um, it would only take 25 of you then. It wouldn't even take the 100 people. But you can buy four businesses. Four. And you commit this $3 a day. And every five years you repeat this. In addition to that, you dedicate 5% of your income to do business at those locations. So it could be 1% of your income in each four of those businesses. 4%. Four businesses, 4%. 1% in each location. So one is a hamburger place. You spend 1% of your money. It's one penny out of every dollar that you make. You dedicate it to spend it there. You make, you know, 
um, you know, that's uh, a dollar out of every hundred dollars you make. Just spend a dollar out of every hundred dollars in one of those locations. If you commit to that, and your fellow man commits to that, and what they do is they hire local kids from your immediate area to work at those four locations. You can get, um, you can hire what? Five, ten kids? They don't have to be kids. They can be unemployed people. I'm not talking about cracked out, drunken, thieving, you know, troublemakers. I'm not talking about those folks. Those guys got to, they got a right to work too and they need money too, but they got to get their uh, stuff together before they want to come into or could come into your business. But you hire your group. You hire these kids or these adults. You hire them. Military people, handicapped people, just unemployed people. And there's a lot of white folks, uh, that, you know, that's in the inner cities too. You hire them. It's primarily something black folks could do, but you can hire some, some very good, nice, you know, great white folks that just don't have no money, though, no jobs, you know. It really is no more white people, white kids, definitely. It's no more white kids. I mean, it's no more Will Robinsons, you know. They're black now. They're blacker than black people. So we're all in the boat together. The rich is a green. Period. If you ain't green, you ain't a thing to them. They're not thinking of you that way. And I, I don't mean to offend any rich folks out there. You're welcome to put your 25000 in as well. But if you do that, and you don't need 100% participation in the black culture. We've got 30 million people of color in America. You don't need 30 million people to put together a thousand dollars each. Most wars are won with 20% participation. But that's how you shoot for 50%. So that's 15 million people you shoot for. And of course you can't get, you know, one out of two black folks to do anything. So you don't, you know, you, you tell them about it. But if you can convince just 30% to consider it. And if 20%, 20% of black folks, people of color, people of interest, they don't have to be black, it could be other colors, other cultures. 20% of people of color, though, participate. That's only two people out of 10 participate. If you can get them to do it, then you can solve the problem. So, that's not a big number. And if they do that, they can annihilate black unemployment without the president, without the Congress, without the Senate, without corporate America, without any of that. Now, am I recommending that that's what they should do? I recommend that that should be plan C. Plan A would be through the government. Plan B would be through corporate America. And if that 30 million say to corporate America, look, we buy your products, we use your services. If you're not hiring a large chunk of these folks and can show it then I think we're gonna to have to take our business elsewhere because we want to recycle some of these dollars and if you're not on board with that then we're going to love you you are our brothers you are fellow Americans you are corporate giants we respect you but if you can't circulate and I don't mean the little tiny little Banners you put up in the neighborhood saying you support car washes and and the, you know you send a couple of scholarships to kids. No, no, none of that that, that little flunky, monkey, junkie, donkey business. I'm talking about some serious, serious employment, serious, serious cash flow, giving a percent or two back to those places and those people who help you. If you can't do that, then 
There's no wrath, no hardness, no no meanness, no shouting, no boycotts, all this. We just don't buy your products. We just look at your products, your gas, your food chain, your whatever. If you're not giving back, if you're not seriously in a committed, large way supporting these folks who support you and family support you and have supported you for years. If you're not doing it, well, then we just uh, take our business elsewhere. Or we just start the same industry ourselves and just do it. And if we're not proficient in that particular industry to run it, you just hire professionals like you do. So, uh, inner city folks might own it and run it. But, you know, white folks are very good with management, just like black folks, certain black folks. I have that uh, discipline, managing mindset. We can hire them to do it. Hell, they could be overseas folks to do it. They don't have to have no connection to uh, certain cultures. They could just be administrators. Who cares? As long as the money is green and it's coming back, that's all that matters. That would be plan B. Plan C... Is what I said implement with a thousand dollars. Thousand dollars, three dollars a day, a thousand dollars a year, every five years. Just don't think about it, just give it up. If you can convince 20% of black America to do that, it would annihilate, annihilate, eradicate. Black unemployment forever in America. That easy. 25 people who do this get together and buy a business. Hire 5 or 10 unemployed people in their immediate area, buy a business in their immediate area, commit to 5% of your income to that business. They sell barbecue, they make dresses, they iron clothes, whatever. Just look at it as a loss. The thousand as a loss. The five percent as a loss. Now, you don't want to lose any money. What's the sake of losing money? What am I talking about here? You just simply make the commitment. And you make sure that you don't lose because the people that you do this with, the five or twenty-five people, you make sure they're decent people. And as best you can. Now, it's going to be some hardship in doing that, starting. It's going to be some disappointments. There's going to be some theft and thievery. And there's going to be some loss for legitimate and illegitimate reasons. There are going to be all kinds of things that are going to go wrong. There are going to be whispers and doubts and fears. But in the end, if you forget about yourself and you forget about that money, but not just abandon the money, and that's why you're paying the five percent. You're going to be hands-on. You're going to be active. It's going to see if it's in your community. Did you every time you drive home from work, you're going to look at it. If it's in your community, every time you walk by your dog, walk your dog, or you ride your bike, you're going to go there. If you're committing. 1% to each of the four businesses that you buy, you're going to participate. So you actively, you're there all the time. Now, if you hire kids that are local, then you know these kids. You see these kids around. Now, they're either going to break in your house. You're either going to support them when they go to jail and get in trouble. Or you can support them this way. And then the last little clincher that guarantees that it works is that you make the kids, the five or ten kids that um, you hire, you make them promise, sign a promissory note, a card or something, saying that they will one day do the same thing that you're doing now. That they would put $3 away and that $3 would be $1,000 and that $1,000 will go every five years into another business like in business. And that they would hire people from their neighborhood, and they would do it, and so on, and so on, and so on. If you do that, they would annihilate it. And that is the answer.
C, of eliminating, eradicating black unemployment. Period. Without any help from the government, without any help from private industry, without any help from corporate America, the power is in your hands. Okay. Well, this is show number 12 of Axe, the smartest man in the world. Anything. And I'll be sure to answer you. So, Axe, the smartest man in the world. And he will be sure to answer you. You just ask, Papa. Ba da dee ba ba, you just die. Da 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 da, you just die. Sha 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 sha, you just die. The smartest man in the world. Yeah. Okay, peace. It's your boy Stone Thug. Go to StoneThug.com. Get a download. Buy an item. Support. Me, I'll support you, and the world will go round and round. God bless. Peace out.